Hi guys, in this video I'm gonna talk about the Lotus 88 and that car Lotus 88 and that car uh, was uh, or debuted in Formula 1 in 1981 but it was promptly banned because uh, it had a so-called twin chassis and uh, the governing body and also the competitors of Lotus did not want to see that car race. Now, the car had a very interesting concept. I'm going to try and explain it here in, in simplified terms in, that in this video. Uh, first of all, I'm going to draw me some tires. And mind you, I mean, the drawing here is a simplified model, not, not a real life model of the car. I'm just simplifying things so... Um, so uh, I can depict the, 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 the theory behind that, that uh, concept much better. Okay, that is, those are the tires. Now, let me change colors. Now we have, uh, oh, wait a minute. Let me, just, uh, let me just fix that last tire I don't like. It's just gonna put it a bit further out. Yeah, that's better. Okay, that'll do. Now, change colors. Now, in 1981, uh, we had ground effects. And ground effects, I explained ground effects in a separate video. Ground effects is basically, looking at a car from the side, you would have, those are the tires. And in ground effects, you'd have, a, a, the, between, the, between the two tires, you'd have a massive side pod, and that side pod contained uh, an inverted wing profile in it and that inverted wing created a lot of uh, downforce or negative lift and that downforce pressed the car on the ground thus making it more stable in turns and able to, to, to handle turns in much higher speeds and um, that ground effects was also pioneered by Lotus in 1978 and by 1981 all Formula 1 cars were ground effect cars now the problem with ground effects is the following when you have a, a, a the, the the massive uh, aerodynamic forces will only work if the car is stable the problem with formula one cars is that when they break they tend to pitch in this uh, uh, in this uh, direction when they accelerate they tend to pitch in that direction when they turn looking at a car from the front when they turn they tend to roll either this way or that way depending on the on the turn so that's why ground effect cars were stiffly or very stiffly sprung in order to avoid those rolling or pitching movements now this stiff springing rendered the cars practically undrivable a driver sitting in, an, in a stiffly sprung car is basically driving a car without suspension meaning he's getting every he's feeling every bump on the circuit and this this these vibrations are are, are, hit, are you know are impeding his his visibility because you know he cannot see properly everything is shaking up and down plus it's very straining to drive such a car especially at high speeds those high uh, uh, g forces are also uh, uh, um, you know uh, uh, at a disadvantage to the driver so basically the Lotus 88 tried to uh, make it easier for the driver and at the same time produce these huge uh, uh, amounts of downforce. And what they did, they had a first chassis or a first part of the chassis was those side pods. And those, uh, and those housed that uh, uh, negative wind profile. I'm just going to draw it on the dotted line. So those house the, the underwing profile and those side pods are the ones producing massive amounts of downforce, holding the car or pressing the car uh, to the ground. All right, there we go. And those, those two pods were then connected with some uh, bulkheads now, I don't know how many they were, but let me do four. Right, so now this, this is the sort of the ground effect system of that car, and that was attached to the wheels with very stiff springs, extremely stiff springs. Okay, I'm just, 
So there we go. All right. So that's the first part. Now comes the second part. Do it, do it in red, the second chassis. And the second part fitted in that groove here, in that section between the two pods. There we go. All right. And that second part housed the driver. Let me put it here. That's, that's the driver's cockpit. All right. And just so there's the, there's where the driver driver is sitting here. Then behind the driver you have the fuel tank. Okay. And behind the fuel tank, you would have the engine. Let me just throw the trumpets. Okay, so, and this red part is where the driver sat. The driver is sitting here. And this red, red uh, chassis or red part is also connected to the wheels through a different suspension. This time, the suspension is via soft springs and dampers. Yeah, same thing here. All right, same thing here. So the red springs are connecting the red chassis to the wheels, and it's, it uses soft springs, whereas the blue chassis or the blue the ground effect system, that blue part of the car, is connected to the wheels with those stiff blue springs. Now what happens when the car is driving, that red part moves up and down relative to the blue part. Okay, so the blue part is fixed on the road, stuck to the road through its stiff springs, and that red part, because it's got softer springs, is wallowing up and down. But this wallowing is, is much more pleasant for the driver because he's now he's got much softer uh, springs, but it does not impede the aerodynamics because that part, the red part, is moving up and down like this, and it does not, you know, it does not play a role uh, uh, on, on, or does not uh, affect the, the, the blue section, the blue section of the car, because that section is independently uh, uh, connected to the, to the wheels and it's moving very in a very limited capacity due to its drift springs, whereas the red part is moving up and down because it's got much softer springs. And that, that car was much more pleasant for the driver because he was he, he was connected via soft springs to the to the to the wheels and thus road yet at the same time that car was producing a huge amount of downforce because that blue section the, the ground force producing section was stiffly strong and had did not have to have any compromises for driver comfort because the driver was connected via the red springs that in a nutshell is how the lotus 88 worked if you got any questions or or, or comments Please drop me a you know a line on the feedback link at the bottom or in the YouTube comments.